I want to talk for a few about where we think it's going. What are we aiming for in terms of the experience we want to deliver to you? And this isn't a claim that we're doing this all today. Hopefully you can see pieces and parts of this in our product, but this is to give you a sense of where we would like to go. The future of enterprise technology. And I, I like these three words to describe uh, where we think it's going. And um, uh, I'll talk through these. Lightweight, diverse, transparent. Lightweight is pretty simple. You know, if you're trying to get somewhere quickly, you travel very lightly. You don't carry much with you. It's a very simple idea. And in a, whether you're a person or whether you're a global company, it's the same notion. Your company needs to move fast and needs to change fast. The more you're carrying on your back, the harder that is. And if there's anything about cloud computing, it's about lightening the load. It's about saying, we, we may not need so many data centers. Maybe we don't need any data centers for a lot of companies. Um, we don't have to support and manage and install and deal with all this stuff. That's the very essence of cloud computing, is getting stuff off your balance sheet, off your backs, moving quickly. Um, being green and being sort of uh, uh, efficient in terms of energy usage is also a huge benefit you get. Somebody like Google and others that are the big cloud computing players put a lot of energy towards delivering compute power in a very, very green and efficient manner by building data centers where we can have, have low cost sources of power, of renewable energy, uh, wherever possible. So lightweight is obvious. One of the really interesting things about cloud computing, there was a great article about this uh, in the past week, is because it's radically reduced the cost of starting a new business, it's resulted in this kind of crazy Cambrian explosion of startups uh, in technology startups. What 10 years ago, on the first go around or more of the internet, uh, you know, what might have been taken $5 million to get this company off the ground, now it started with $500,000 or $50,000. And all of a sudden, the whole thing, is the dynamic of startups is changing. Um, they can, you know, so many more ideas are being explored. A lot of them will fail for sure. But just that amount of exploration, the, the radical lowering of the capital requirements to do so, is creating an, an incredible change uh, in, in how fast technology is changing. And um, this has enormous implications, not just for startups. If you think you, know, you want to go do a startup in Silicon Valley, that's a great thing too. But it has enormous implications in big businesses too, because the same effect takes hold. You don't need enormous investments uh, to move forward. Diversity. Um, Stephen had a great slide on diversity uh, and how so much, so much you know, innovation comes from people talking to people that aren't like them, of cross-pollination of ideas from different domains. That's a very powerful idea. Um, in the IT world, it's kind of a scary idea in many ways. IT for many, many years has been driven towards homogeneity and conformity. And for a lot of very good reasons, right? You, you, you have buying power. If you buy all from one vendor, you have a standard image on your desktop or your PCs, et cetera. Um, it keeps your support costs as low as possible. Everybody's using the same thing. Sounds great, other than it's now become an antiquated notion. There's a, there's a study by Cisco that just came out that said four out of five graduating college students expect to be able to bring their own mobile device to work. And in reality, as you know, this is happening. This is happening in, in droves. And it's driven by the fact that people want to work how they want to work. And it's kind of increasingly difficult for any employer to tell the employee, this is how you got to do it. This is the device you have to use, and this is how you're going to innovate at our company. And in reality, if you want to create an environment to attract the right people, user choice and diversity is important. And services need to be device agnostic. It's really impossible to say, oh, we're just going to have this service that only works on one device. It has to be this PC or that mobile phone, et cetera. People want to work where they want to work. And uh, that's really what the open web is about, is, is standard so any device can work. Now, here's an interesting thing I think is really important with respect to diversity and security. Is it's not intuitive to most people, but these diverse environments actually can and, and will be more secure than what we're accustomed to seeing. And that might seem kind of crazy. People are bringing in whatever phone they want, a Windows phone, an Android phone, an iPhone, et cetera, and plugging it in, or maybe it's a tablet or whatever comes out next week. And you're going to plug it into your system and all of a sudden have access to their corporate data and getting their job done, and it's going to be more secure. That seems kind of crazy, but that's the cloud for you. The cloud is designed so you can enforce policies at the center uh, about your content, your company, and then people want to connect devices to that cloud, they can do that under your terms. And that's actually 
uh, uh, not intuitive to, to people at first, but if you think about the old generation technology, it was designed for another world entirely, people sitting within one firewall. And uh, the world doesn't work that way anymore. So diversity is, is very uh, central to where computing environments are going. You can fight it for sure, and for some time, I'm sure you will hold to it. But the power of having an environment that people want to come out of university, out of other companies, come to your company, come to your organization and work, means you're going to have to have an environment that attracts them. Transparency. Now, what this to me means is technology that's well designed should disappear. You should not be thinking about technology, you should be thinking about the idea. I, I, something struck me that, uh, about this. I, I had a kitchen remodel done recently, and I was chatting with a, a carpenter just about whatever tools he was using. Why does he like this one versus that one? And he said something. He said, well, when I use this one, which is the better tool, I don't think about the tool. I think about the wood. And it was a, just a sort of, it just struck me right then. He really said something profound there. He's not thinking about the tool. Anytime you have to stop and say, what's this thing doing? Why isn't it working? What just happened? It's sort of a, a break in your, th your, your process. It's a break in your, uh, your thinking. And it's a failure of the technology. And I don't claim that we are perfect at this, but our goal really is to not think about the technology. I think if we've done this anywhere, we've done this on Google.com. You type in something, you're not thinking about what Google's doing. You're immediately into the results and where you're going. That is where we need to be. There's, there's, there's no synapse. There's no, th th there's no gap between your, your effort and your attempt to do something, um, and uh, as well as uh, uh, and your, the tool's ability to fulfill it. I should also say there's no distractions. This really means the technology should be only what you need and nothing more. And I don't think the history of enterprise technology has ever given this even a single bit of consideration. More features, more functions are not always a good thing. More features, more functions are not always a good thing. It may not seem obvious to you, but every bit of something on a screen is attracting user attention and taking your attention away from something else. So really, technology needs to head in a direction where it knows what you need when you need it, and it delivers it to you then. And you can focus on what you're doing and not hunting through menus of buttons, et cetera, to find where you want to go. And actually, this is really important. More team, less work. The, the tools should be empowering. They should even be fun. Nobody would ever say, I've never gotten an RFP that said, must be fun, you know. But realistically, these are people's lives. We all spend an enormous fraction of our waking lives in the workplace, and it should be enjoyable. You should have an environment and a tool set that people want to, to work in, because that's, that's when they really start to get things done. So what, what is our approach to innovation that I think is unique and different? Um, Google is definitely, having been here almost eight years now, a very different company. And we think about it very differently. And I think big bets are a good way to think about it. Um, if you said, you know, what do we focus on at Google? What does Larry want us to do? We, we tend to focus on things that nobody else in the world wants to take on. I think that's the simplest thing. Hard computer science related problems that most people would say, you know, no thank you. And that sort of are things that immediately attract uh, Google. A few examples from history, if you go back to April 2004, um, you know, webmail at, at the time was four or six megs of storage. You know, we get single emails bigger than that now, for sure. But people would spend most of their time deciding what to delete and keep just so they could continue to receive email. And we launched a gigs free storage for Gmail. It was not our brightest moment to do it on April Fool's Day. Um, people didn't know whether we were joking or not. But as it turned out, we weren't joking. Um, Google App, you know, now Google Apps is up to 25 gigs uh, of mail. But it really changed the whole industry. And that's actually very important to what Google tends to do, which is not just try to establish ourselves as a leader, but bring along a whole industry in a way that I think helps everybody. And um, um, we're doing a lot more. I'll talk about Gmail in a bit. Android, uh, November 5th, 2007. And um, again, an open source mobile platform um, a very, very big and risky bet. There are now more than 550 Android devices have been launched globally. There's 550,000 new devices are activated every single day. And you can see a total of 190 million total activated. So 
So having that sort of environment where people can contribute to it, all the partners that Android has, all the many, many thousands of developers uh, developing Android applications has created an incredibly powerful ecosystem. And again, like Steven said, people doing things with the Android platform we could not even have imagined. Chrome, I think Chrome is one of the more fascinating ones because if there's anything I remember from the launch of Chrome, it was the number of times people said, you know, why do we need another browser? Why do we need another, you know, aren't there enough of them out there? And in truth, the state of browser technology was a little bit stagnant back then. Not to say it wasn't moving forward, but really not at a pace that, that the industry needed for the browser to become as central as it's become. So Chrome, you know, a few years later, with 200 million users, is just an extraordinary achievement for Google. Having said that, it's also a great achievement for the industry. If you look how much innovation is going on across all the major browsers, how fast HTML5 is coming into being, an open standard that any browser can implement and any website can implement, and how fast it's all moving now. Um, I think, I think um, the sort of uh, power of having a, a new contender in the market that's pushing things very, very quickly uh, has shown itself a great success. What next? Well, um, lots of things, lots of things. Google's going to continue to make big bets. Um, this is one of the self-driving cars that you've probably read about. I'm not going to tell you about self-driving cars. Um, you might wonder, what is this, is this, how is this relevant to me? Um, but I think it's fair to say a team that could build a self-driving car is probably a team that could teach all of us a few things about how to do uh, take on big uh, and ambitious challenges. So you're actually going to hear later today um, uh, from Astro, from the, uh, uh, who's the engineering director for uh, that team. And you're going to get to hear a lot of interesting insights uh, about that project. Now, let's just scope it down a little bit and talk about how we deliver technology to the enterprise. This, for those who are not part of the, part of the cloud computing world yet, is a very different way of delivering technology. It's not installed. It comes to you. It comes to you in small bits. Sometimes it comes to you in larger bits. As I said, one of the things we've been doing over the years is trying to make sure we deliver it in a way that you can consume it properly. It doesn't surprise you. It doesn't shock you. I like to say that the way we're delivering our technology to you, it's a little bit like watching your children grow up. You don't sort of day to day notice any change. But if you went away for six months and you came back, you'd hardly recognize them. And that's the way it is. The technology just gets better each, each and every day. All you have to do is to refresh the browser. So I'm going to show you a simple example. In the last 30 days, the last 30 days, what, what we have delivered that's new. An all new Gmail. It's only opt-in for now. So uh, how many have opted into the new Gmail? All right. We've got a very uh, progressive crowd here. Seems like the vast majority. We took those lessons to heart. Less is more. It's simpler. There's less on the screen. It lets you focus on the content and what you're doing. Um, but it's actually much more sophisticated than the old Gmail, probably the most sophisticated HTML5 application in the world. It actually adjusts itself to the size of your screen automatically. If you're a person who uses a lot of labels, you can expand and expand that space as much as you want. If you prefer to you do a lot of chats, you can use the space that way as well. Um, if you like priority inbox, you can switch back and forth between different views of your inbox in just a second. You don't have to choose them uh, in advance. Um, so this is a completely new Gmail. I would encourage all of you who haven't yet to give this a try. Change is always a little difficult for some people, so we don't expect everybody in the world to love the new Gmail. But it's really show, give you a sense of the direction uh, we're going. Email is something um, you hear a lot of stories about. You know, People aren't using email anymore. Email really does need to be reinvented in many ways. It's been around a long time. It's very useful, obviously. It's still probably the most used business application in the entire world, but it needs to change. And you're going to see a lot of new innovation coming from Google with respect to email over the coming year. So hold on for that. Smaller thing, embedded charts. So one of the fun things about Google Spreadsheets is it's very easy to get data in there. You can crowdsource it by having 20 people adding data at once. You can use a poll or a form to feed data into the, and you can very easily create charts. Now all of a sudden you can publish them out to websites, internet sites, what have you, uh, with embedded charts. A really simple idea, 
Again, sometimes it's the big things, sometimes it's the small things, but these just come. You don't have to install anything, no service packs, nothing like that. Refresh your browser. New presentations. We, uh, over the last year or so, have really reinvented our Docs products from, from the very get-go. Uh, they are built on the, a shared infrastructure now. It really is our belief that we have the stack, the technology to take us very fast into the future. You can see how a word processing product moved forward very quickly. And then our spreadsheets, we just have launched, again for opt-in if you haven't tried this yet, a completely new from the grounds up presentation product. Really designed around making perfect, perfectly beautiful presentations, fast, simple, collaborative again, all about not just one person building a presentation, but people working together. And this is again just the beginning of what you'll see from us uh, around our presentations product. Here's another simple small thing. How hard is it, when, how much of a pain is it when you have five or six or eight people and you need to schedule a time for them to meet? Calendar products have been doing this the same way forever. We just added suggested times in Google Calendar. Very simple way to say here's some times when everybody can meet, take your pick. And um, again, all in the last 30 days, just new features uh, keep coming. And here's a big one, Google Plus. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, we just made it available to our, our Google Apps users, both businesses and schools. And this really, I think, indicates as much as anything the direction that Google's going. Not so much Google Plus as a destination or as a service, but really socially enabling all parts of Google and really changing the direction and the trajectory of the company to become very, very people-centric. And this is a very exciting time and the consumer internet, with all the different choices out there and how quickly things are evolving, it's definitely an exciting time. But I think it's gonna be just as important, just as compelling for the business users, for the organizational users, uh, to really socially enable your organization. And the way I think about this is, this isn't kind of like a fancy extra, a little place you go once in a while when you wanna check a stream or something. This is going to be at the very core of what you would think of as a business productivity suite. The ability to share, to have multi-person video, to be able to push documents and concepts and crowdsource ideas and get help and find experts all in one place, all in the tools you already use. That's what this is about. We're at the very early stages of Google+. Plus. We're at the even earlier stages of Google+, Plus as part of socially enabling the enterprise. But you can expect things to move very, very quickly. And the capabilities that we bring together here, along with our productivity apps, I think are gonna be pretty, uh, uh, pretty enormous change for the industry. I can tell you for sure that within Google, it's just amazing. We can't imagine life before, before Google Plus. A couple last things and then I'll wrap up. I realize I'm out of time. Um, a couple of new things just this week. Um, they never stop coming. So we've had for a while in Google Apps ability to manage mobile devices. If you have all these diverse devices coming in from around the world, the old-fashioned way of managing devices just seems kind of crazy. You're gonna set up servers and somehow register them all with the servers and give them back to the people and forget it. It's not gonna work. So we really said, no, you ought to be able to manage devices, enforce policies from the cloud, and we've been doing this a while. Uh, but, and, and not just for Android devices, of course, for iPhone or iOS devices, as well as Windows Phone devices and others. Um, but the idea being from the cloud, you can decide what your policies ought to be, you can enforce passwords or strengths of passwords. You can wipe devices that are lost. You can locate lost devices using Google Maps. All very simple ideas. This week, we're making a very significant upgrade. You can actually begin through a dashboard to see how your users are going mobile. The whole world's going mobile. You ought to know what's happening inside your company. And you can also set policies down to a group or down to an individual level. So really having more flexibility there. But a simple notion, again, no need to install software, buy servers, all that stuff. Do it from the cloud, it just works. We're also, uh, if you follow our platform site, a lot of forward progress on making Google's computational power available to developers out there. It's been our goal to really let people develop products the same way our own engineers do. And uh, BigQuery, which is really a, a, a SQL type ad hoc queries into very, very large data sets. It's being made available to a lot more companies of all sizes today. You'll see a blog post about that today uh, if it's not out there already. But we're not talking about just a lot of data. We're talking about 
a lot of data. S think about 60 billion rows, 70 terabytes of uncompressed data, and being able to do queries on that ad hoc in a matter of seconds. Very, you know, s things that you've just dreamt about in the past, and things that you would have to spend just incredible amounts of money uh, in order to build out and, and do yourself. So BigQuery is getting a big upgrade this week, and hope you, you can come check that out. Um, Amit mentioned all this stuff today. We're going to show you a lot about our devices, our Chromes and just a minute, Chromebooks, and we're also going to uh, uh, show you a lot about our apps and our social such stuff. And, uh, and there's also some sessions tomorrow on all these areas uh, if you want to uh, stick around tomorrow and go into some of the product breakouts. Today, what you'll see, as I mentioned, Chromebooks, which we're going to get to in just a moment, making a lot of progress around you know, devices that were designed with the internet in existence. Can you imagine that? Um, designed for the internet completely. And uh, we're going to get there in just a second. You're going to see some uh, fun stuff about Google Apps, which I'm sure a lot of folks in the audience are already using. I'm going to show you where we're headed there. And of course, Google Plus, which there's an incredible amount of interest uh, in. So, um, and I will say, first of all, I want to say thank you. And I also want to say, because we want you to experience this, at the end of the day today, Everybody here is going to get a Chromebook that you're going to be able to experience pure internet, uh, and a device designed for the pure internet. That is, assuming your policies allow you to accept this as an evaluation unit, let us know about that. We don't want anybody getting in trouble. So with that, I want to say thank you, and uh, I'm going to bring up Rajan Shah.